We all know that there's a big price difference between a 20 megapixel camera and a 50 megapixel camera, but in this video, I'm gonna be showing how you could be wasting your money on megapixels. I'm gonna do that in a few different ways. The first thing I'm gonna do are some simple calculations that relate to our human vision and how that relates to megapixels and what our cameras can produce for us, depending on the type of work that you would be doing. After doing that, then, I'm gonna be showing how you also have other factors to consider when when it comes to cameras and certain things about sensor size and the megapixel count as well. The first thing to consider is what's known as visual acuity, and that's how sharp we actually see something, and this is easily calculable, and this is how those common eye charts are put together. Using some calculations based off those eye charts, we can then calculate how many megapixels we'd be looking at. Those eye charts are using an angle that's limited by our human vision, and then how far away something would be based on that angle. The angle is measured in something called arc minutes, and basically that just means that there's a very small angle of vision that comes out that sees something far away. For instance, on 20-20 vision, if you take a look at one of those eye charts, then if you have 20-20 vision, you would be able to discern between the letters about one arc minute, one pixel per inch, if you were to calculate that in megapixels. If you were to look at the height of the letter, it's usually about five arc minutes. So taking that into account, by using that five arc minutes as even the outside edge of what we can see to really be sharp, then we can put that into some basic trigonometry, and basically it's gonna come out to a constant that we can use in a very simple formula, and that constant is 3,438. Now, how that's derived, that's if you wanna dig into the trigonometry for that, let me know and I can leave some links for you. But basically, that is just using the tangent of that angle, basic trigonometry. We're not gonna get into that. What we are gonna do, though, is use that in a basic formula, where the pixels per inch that you would need to print something or perceive something is going to be equal to that constant divided by the distance in inches. Now, this is important because it's how far we see something. For instance, on that 2020 chart where they're calculating that at five arc minutes, well, that's because it's a, it calculated at 20 feet away or an equivalent. Depending on the office that you're in and the size of it, they calculate where the 20 foot equivalent would be. So based off distance and then that angle for our visual acuity, we can see things that are actually very sharp. Now, some people have 2010 vision, some people have 2015, but the average is known as 2020. Here's an example. For instance, take this picture here. This is a 24 megapixel photo, and it may look very sharp in this video because we're not viewing this at 100%. So if we zoom in at 100%, then we can see that this is very far from sharp. This was only a four megapixel photo, and so if we're trying to view it at 24 megapixels, then it's going to be very blocky. Billboards have the same effect. If you were to see them from the road, say 100 feet away, they're going to look very sharp, but if you stand next to them, they're gonna look like this. It's gonna be very blocky and very low resolution. And that's why distance is important in this very simple calculation. The calculation is simply gonna be, and I'm gonna graph this out here next, is that our pixels per inch, or our dots per inch, depending if you're gonna be viewing it on a screen or if you're going to be printing it, that's simply going to be equal to that constant of 3438 divided by our distance in inches. When we graph that out, some of the results here are going to be very surprising because this will also then relate exactly to how many megapixels we need depending on the product that we're going to be producing. So here's a very simple spreadsheet where I'm taking a look at those distance in inches and making it simple by looking at the viewing distance in feet, but then also that PPI calculation. You can see up here, there's our constant 3438, and it's then dividing that distance in inches. From that then, we can see what this pixel per inch should be based off our viewing distance. So when we take a look at a graph of this, what we can see is that when we're very close to it, when we're about a foot away from an image, we're right under, right at about that magic mark of 300 pixels per inch, 300 DPI dots per inch. That's known as that sweet spot. Most printing houses will ask you to submit photos in this resolution, and it does get a very high resolution, and when we're looking at it visually from a foot away, that's what we need to see something very sharp. 
But look what happens once we get to just two feet away. Immediately that resolution drops to right below 150 dpi. When we get to three feet away, it drops to 96, four feet is 72. And look what happens when we're 10 feet away, we're down to just 29 pixels per inch. Viewing something at 10 feet away, you're really not going to see all the detail that you would if you were at just one foot away, if you were looking at this very close to your face, or if this was on the other side of the room, you're gonna see something very different. You'll notice here too that the slope on here is non-linear, meaning that immediately, just from moving a few feet away from it, the amount of visual acuity in our vision drops dramatically. And then as we get farther away, it just slowly, slowly, slowly declines. Then we can take this instance here, knowing what our pixels per inch would be, we can then relate this to what print sizes would be. So if we were to make prints based off of a 24 megapixel picture, and that would be one that has about 6,000 pixels across and 4,000 pixels up on its camera sensor, what we'd be looking at is from one foot away, then we could make something that was about 17 inches if it were to be a square picture. This would be kind of our worst case scenario. Most of the time they're at a different ratio. But to make this simple, I just used it as a square. What this means then is that at two feet away, if people are viewing the images at two feet away, then that means that we could make something that's about three feet wide. And if we're looking at something that is about six feet away, then we're easily getting close to about 10 foot prints, things that we would never make. So these are basically huge prints. But now let's take a look at the difference between a 24 megapixel camera and a 48 megapixel camera. And we can see that the difference is negligible when we're talking about viewing distances that are just a couple few feet away. The detail really comes into play when the, we're getting farther and farther away from the image. So we can see that the spread, the difference here, is a lot greater using a 40 mega, 48 megapixel camera compared to a 24 megapixel camera. But let's take a look at a real world example. Let's compare two cameras. Let's take a look at the Nikon Z5, which is for $1,000, you get 24 megapixels. The Z7 II by Nikon, that gets you 45 megapixels, but it usually costs about $3,000, but on sale, you can get it for about $2,000. So on sale, about twice the cost as a 24 megapixel camera, the Nikon Z5. Taking each of these cameras, we can apply a super simple formula to figure out will their megapixels satisfy what we want to print. And we do that by looking at how many pixels wide we have on the sensor divided by the DPI that we want to print at, whether it's going to be viewed from one feet, two feet, or three feet away like we showed, whether we're going to be at about 300, 150, or 100 DPI. All that we have to do is just take that sensor width, divide it by the DPI, and we have our print width. And then the same goes for the pixel height, depending on our print height. So when we take a look at the sensors, the Nikon Z5, the 24 megapixel camera, has a little over 6,000 pixels wide and a little over 4,000 pixels high. The Z7, the 45 megapixel camera, has a lot more pixels. It has over 8,200 pixels wide and 5,500 pixels high. But what does that mean when we apply this formula where we want to see what our print height and our print width would be? When we take a look at using 300 DPI, it really doesn't bias very much, but that's assuming we want to print at 300 DPI because something's going to be viewed at about a foot away. Once again, getting that 20-20 vision for our visual acuity that we graphed out. So with this, we get about seven more inches in width when we're taking a look at using the Z7 and about five inches in height. But this is typically at about a foot away, we're talking about printed material that people are holding in their hands, typically not something mounted on a wall. And this is why magazines or even books, they're wanting you to print in 300 DPI to get the best resolution possible because people are viewing it so close. 
But once we move up to 150 DPI, which would be with 2020 vision, very, very sharp at just two feet away, we can see that immediately we basically double what we can do in our print width. We can go to 40 inches by over two feet when we take a look at using just the 24 megapixel camera. And when we get down to 100 DPI, when we're getting three feet away to get that 2020 vision, visual acuity, it's immense. We're talking about a five foot print, which you'd have to basically make in a mural. There's not many print houses that can do something five feet wide. And when you're taking a look at the Z7, it gets much bigger, almost about two feet in width. But for the most part, what I found is that this sweet spot right in the middle, 150 DPI works very well for printing just about everything that I have on my walls because it does allow me to print very large and I'm never going to be standing less than two feet away looking at these prints. Even something in between, if you had to do 200 DPI, then you can get something that's in between. But if you really feel that you're gonna be looking at something very, very close, then you might wanna get the Z7, but still, once again, you're not gonna get a whole lot when you're trying to print at 300 DPI to get it as sharp as possible because at one foot away, once again, you're only at 27.5 inches wide. But that's just part of the picture, so to speak. Consider that to be print material, but what about when people are looking at stuff on some type of digital device? Well, even on a phone, they're gonna be holding it fairly close, but it's also going to be a much smaller area, kind of a smaller print, so to speak, because of that. Even if they were looking at it on a monitor, that's gonna be different too. But even if you were to look at 4K, a 4K resolution comes out to just eight megapixels. So we really lose a lot of megapixels if all you're doing is just putting your stuff online. When it comes to printing, that is a different story. And once again, even though you could be printing something 10 feet big, if you're expecting people to walk up close to it and see the detail, then yes, you will wanna have more megapixels. Typically, that's usually not the case. And it's very rare that people will actually make large murals, but if you are, that's when you have to get into then the real high megapixel cameras. There also comes the fact of the effective megapixels that you could have, and that's the ability to crop. So if you're shooting with a 48 megapixel camera, then you have a lot of pixels to crop down. But if you have a 24 megapixel camera and you really did want to have something that was very large and you didn't want to crop it down, then you just use a longer lens. But there's another consideration also that we have to take into account when it comes to the megapixel count. And that's that the more megapixels we have on any given sized sensor, the smaller the photo sites on that sensor will be. So in other words, full frame sensor, if you had 24 megapixels compared to 48 megapixels, well, the 48 megapixel camera is gonna have a lot more photo sites making each one of those photo sites smaller, basically a, a pixel on the sensor. A smaller photo site won't gather as much light information. Fewer photons will be gathered in that photo site, meaning that you could be losing then some contrast, also a little bit of color detail. Now, a lot of modern cameras nowadays adjust for that. There's a lot of software magic that goes on in cameras, even when they produce their RAW files. So that's not really too big of a factor, but this is also why when it comes to doing video, you don't need a huge megapixel camera. It's not gonna get you the detail. Remember that when we're talking about 4K, viewing something on like a 4K monitor, you're gonna be talking about eight megapixels for 4K. So why would I need a 48 megapixel camera? All that those cameras are doing, the high megapixel count, anything above that 4K, that eight megapixels, they're just skipping lines on the sensor and they're just throwing that information away. If you have a full frame sensor then that has 48 megapixels with very small little photo sites on them and you have to throw away most of that, then you're left with eight megapixels of very small photo sites. So this is why, for instance, I use a uh, Micro Four Thirds sensor camera when I'm doing real estate video. And this, by the way, is something that I talk about in my course on videography for real estate. If you're not familiar with that, I do have courses to do real estate photography. I've got a course on doing professional interior photography, one on expert editing exteriors, and also videography for real estate. I've got links to those down in the description for this video. But back onto the subject here, when it comes to printing material, then we also have to consider the medium that you're going to be printing on. 
a lot of people, especially with lifetime portraits and also family stuff, the uh, the wedding uh, genre, a lot of times that will be going on canvas, which is a very rough material. You don't really need a high megapixel count to make that happen. So you could easily get by printing very large prints at 150 DPI. In fact, for my baby elephant series, I've printed all these at 16 by 26 inches at 150 DPI, and that's because a lot of that was limited to the AI generation that was coming out of Firefly, which is limited to only four megapixels. Now, I was then making a lot of other AI stuff on there. I was doing some expansion, and that does come out to about an eight by 13 uh, print, but that would be at 300 DPI. So by using 150 DPI, I can make the print twice as big and nobody notices the loss in resolution. I don't have people putting it right up to their nose to take a look at that. Now, in my Baby Elephant's Children's book, that's a little bit different story. People are looking at that a lot closer, but the images are much smaller. We're talking about an eight and a half inch square. So those are printed at 300 DPI. So it boils down to, do you really need to have a high megapixel camera? Well, if you're really gonna be doing a lot of cropping and heavy cropping, you need to reevaluate what lenses you're using to do that because that's one of the big reasons of having this high megapixel camera. Now, for wildlife photography, that can come in very handy because sometimes wildlife is so far away, no matter the size of the lens, you're still gonna be doing some heavy cropping. So that can come into play. If you're taking a look at a lot of the popular commercial genres, and commercial I mean by anything that's basically going to be paying you money for doing the common stuff like weddings, portraits, real estate photography, like what I do, those things aren't usually going to be printed on very large material, but the most important thing is that you're not going to be shooting any of that from as far away as you would an eagle that would be flying over a mountaintop. So you're going to be a lot closer to that, so you have a lot more of the visual acuity being gathered by the zoom that you're going to be using on your lenses. So when it boils down for me doing real estate photography and also some landscape photography and also some portrait photography, I've settled in for years on using 24 megapixel cameras. They are a lot less expensive than the high megapixel stuff that comes out. And quite honestly, a lot of that's just a marketing technique by these camera makers to get you to pay more for the latest, greatest toy that comes out. Sure, you put it on your screen, you do some pixel peeping and you go, wow, look at the detail. But in the real world, that's just not gonna happen. You're the only one viewing those at 100% on your screen and nobody else really is.